Now this village is really close to Shrammy Land, which is the name of my hardcore Minecraft base. And I decided to build near this village on purpose because I wanted to transform it into a big city later on in this series. The problem now though is the area between Shrammy Land and this village is completely empty. It's just a basic looking plains biome with nothing there. There is also a pretty massive lack of crop fields in my world. I only have four. So I figured this is the perfect opportunity to build a farming village in this world with a ton of crop fields. Now I'm pretty sure this project took exactly 100 minecraft days to complete i don't know how i did that that it's just kind of wild um but if you end up enjoying this one please consider hitting the like button down below it definitely did take a long while to produce but more importantly i just really hope you guys enjoy this video thank you so much for all the support recently the channel the other day hit 20,000 subscribers which is ridiculous thank you guys so much one more time let's get started with this episode Man, I was just playing Skyblock for the last few hours, and I gotta be honest, dude, just having a ground, really, really nice. Not having the fear of falling off to my death every few seconds is kind of, you know, it's kind of something that I like. I think the best way to start this project right now, though, is to outline some pathways, because then we can more easily figure out where the fields and the houses are going to go. And just for now, I think I'm going to use path blocks, and then I'll, you know, make the path a little bit more interesting down the line. But I think for now, we can probably just extend it through here. And let's connect this all the way up to the village. Now, once we actually build up this city, I will have a gatehouse as the entrance here. But for now, this is probably good enough. The gatehouse will just kind of go in this area somewhere. But now that we have this main path put in, let's branch off a couple to the sides. And we can use these as outlines for the fields that I'm going to build today. Now, of course, it just started raining right when I finished, you know, marking out all these pathways. But we have a ton of space back here to have a bunch of really big fields. Now, these fields aren't going to be exactly as big as like the pathway outline like kind of indicates because I do still have to throw some buildings along the pathways just to kind of make this a village. And these are definitely very tentative pathways because we could keep expanding in this direction, like kind of up this hill, which I kind of really like the idea of. So I might do that at some point in this video once I start throwing down some of these if I feel like I want more. And we can even expand back this way, kind of to the right over here where I'm looking. So we have a lot of room for expansion. Now that we have the basic layout down, I'm going to go grab some cobblestone and we can start marking out where some of these houses are going to go. I'm actually going to use granite for this as well instead of cobblestone because I just had way more granite in my storage room. I don't really have a great plan for this, so <laughs> let me just run around for a little while and try to figure out what I want to do. It might be a bit difficult to imagine right now, considering the houses aren't even kind of built yet. Uh, we just have the outlines. But I threw down a whole bunch of house placements. Now these little squares that are along like the main pathway here, I'm going to use these as like little stands, like little trading huts. And then of course these bigger looking shapes that aren't completely square, they're a little bit more interesting looking, those are all going to be homes. And then these two in the corner, there's like two other square ones, like rectangular ones I guess, like one right there and one over there. Those are going to be windmills. I don't really have too much experience making windmills, but I think it could look kind of nice on like the start of the mountain over there. That's the plan for right now. Um, we could definitely throw in some more houses. Again, we have a bunch of space to expand. I'm kind of liking this spot right here for another house. I feel like that could look kind of nice. I am going to outline one right there. The more I think about it, I think that's a really good spot. But then once I do that, it's time to gather a whole bunch of materials. I apologize if my voice sounds funny, I literally just woke up, but I went back to the storage room then to start compiling all the materials in a big blob of shulker boxes. I grabbed a whole bunch of granite, bricks, packed mud, and dirt in one of the shulker boxes. Then I grabbed pretty much all the stone and the cobblestone I had in my storage room along with a whole bunch of tough. Can't forget the moss too, gotta make some of these blocks into mossy stone. Grabbed a whole bunch of sand blocks like sandstone and smooth sandstone. I also grabbed a little bit of spruce that I had in my spruce chest and a whole bunch of deep slate materials. At this 
point though, it was time to go gather some materials that I didn't already have in my storage room. So I started off getting a whole bunch more spruce wood. I say this all the time, but I use spruce in literally every single one of my builds pretty much. So I'm going to need a whole bunch of this stuff. After the spruce, I decided to completely decimate a forest kind of nearby and gather a massive amount of oak wood and birch and then finally i collected an entire shulker of sandstone which is awesome to gather it takes pretty much no time at all it's an insta mine it's beautiful so let's take all of these materials over to where the village is going to be i should also say that we have a bunch of sandstone smelting in the super smelter that we made last episode but let's set up shop over here and we can start building one of these houses i think i'm going to begin with this one and then work my way around the hillside over here and then we'll do the houses back here at the end without further ado let's begin building Holy shit, that scared the hell out of me. Yeah, so I uh, I still have a pulse. So that is good. Thank you very much, Bolden Brash. You saved my life. Holy crap. All right, let's get let's continue building this. Yeah, so when I was originally building these houses, I thought I was only going to have two different styles of house. One of the houses would have been like the bricks on the bottom and then the sandstone on the top. The other one would have been the stone blocks and then the wood on the top. But I decided eventually to mix and match these wall colors. You'll kind of see what I mean when, you know, I time lapse the rest of the builds. So that's why I said here that I built one of each of the houses. There's going to be a, a couple different kinds of houses here, though, not just two. Here's a quick progress update. I have built one of each of the houses that we're going to have in this village. I'm a really big fan of how, like, the roofs turned out. I think that looks awesome with the moss. And I even got a little bit of grass planted on the moss. Definitely makes it look overgrown. And that's the exact vibe I kind of want to go for. I still need to add some final touches to these guys. Like with leaves and flowers and stuff like that. But I'll probably tackle the exteriors just as a whole once I've finished putting up all of the buildings. But now let's continue building these all around this area. We now have seven new houses in this area and I'm going to take a break from building things. So we're not going to work on the windmills or like the little trading stands just yet. I want to start working on the actual farmland and I think the farmland is going to be very basic. We're probably just going to use leaves and fences. Maybe with a bit of like moss and mossy blocks mixed in. But I don't want to make it too complicated. And I think I'm actually going to use birch leaves. Let's use those with a combination of maybe oak fences just to break away from the spruce that we've been using all over the place because every one of those houses has spruce in it. I'm thinking we just make a butt ton of oak fences. And we have a bunch of extra oak wood to make more. 
and let me go load up on some moss i think the easiest way to do this would just be to take some moss and then just bone meal it around the area rather than having to place down azaleas and flowering azaleas and all that fun stuff so i'll take a couple stacks of moss and we'll take a little bit of bone meal also i can't forget the water buckets so i'm gonna start with this and we can outline where all the farms are going to go which we already sort of did with the path blocks but they will probably be changed uh these were kind of always going to be tentative it kind of just depended on where i put the houses let me sort of go through step by step of one of these farms and then maybe we can just time lapse the rest it's kind of already seen me do this a whole bunch with my area in a couple different ways but we're just going to kind of use this design where we just take some leaves and then switch over to some fences back to leaves again it's very repetitive but it should look good once it's all done And I want to have these houses kind of attached to the farmland as well. I think that'll look pretty nice. It's kind of like each of these houses owns one of the plots, maybe. You can kind of think of it that way. But I threw down leaves in a few random spots. Let's throw down some fences now. And then we'll go back through again and put some moss in and bone meal it. And I think this is going to essentially be the final product for the outlines of the farms. I think the only other thing I would add to this would be some lanterns. Um, but, uh, your boy's kind of poor with coal right now. I've almost survived a thousand days in this world, and I don't have any coal anymore. I haven't mined coal in forever, so that's probably how that happened. But for now, I'm gonna go around and put these big fields all over the landscape here. So let's go ahead and place a whole bunch of fences and a whole bunch of leaves. It's a little difficult to see from up here, but the borders for the farms are now in. And I also fixed up the pathway in some places. I'm sure I didn't get everywhere. But the pathway now kind of goes around everything and goes between a couple of the farms. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. And I may even add more farmland in the future. But for now, this is going to be a lot. I also went ahead and got rid of the moss that was bordering the farms as well. I just kind of think I like it with just the fences and the leaves. And it seems I've missed a couple pieces of moss. I probably missed a whole bunch of this because it kind of blends in in some cases but I should be able to find it once I'm planning down the farmland. Speaking of farmland, we need to go get a whole bunch of crops. And I think the best way for me to do that actually is just to harvest my farms that already exist. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we will get started planting these fields. And I'm definitely gonna do that in a time-lapse because planting fields in a time-lapse is very satisfying to watch. The farmland is looking mighty fine, in my opinion. I'm really excited to see what this is going to look like when everything is completely grown in. Got a small sneak peek down here because the carrot field here, the potato field, and the wheat field is pretty much all grown in. But it's definitely starting to take shape, that's for sure. And I'm pretty sure I forgot to record in replay mod for this potato field here, so I don't really think I have a time lapse for that. So that's definitely on me. Right now though, I wanna work on one of the windmills and I'm gonna put it right here, right in the middle of this potato field. I think it's gonna look really nice. I gotta begin though by emptying out these shulker boxes here and refilling them with materials and I'm gonna need to build this thing. I'm thinking for these windmills here, we're going to have like the base, the first kind of few floors out of oak wood. So we're gonna have the stripped oak wood and oak plank design, and then we're gonna transition into sandstone. I may end up throwing a little bit of birch in there too. That could probably look nice. So I think I'm gonna do that. We'll go from the oak to the birch wood to the sandstone. I'm gonna start here by trying to build up a tower. And in my opinion, trying to make towers look good is quite difficult in Minecraft. And actually, I wanna get rid of all these blocks because I wanna start on the bottom with barrels. And then once again, of course it starts raining. It's just right when I talk, I swear. <laughs> I don't know what kind of curse I have, man. Let's bring these pillars up, I don't know, like seven blocks. We'll see how tall that looks. I think I'm also gonna throw barrels at the top. I feel like that could look nice. I think that's a pretty decent size here for like the first floor. We can probably then push this in a little bit for the rest of the build. It's actually a thunderstorm, so I can go to bed. Let's go. <laughs> let's get rid of the rain. Now let's throw a stair on top of the barrels. Let's put a slab, and then we can place a trap door here. Then another slab, and then another stair. And that can kind of be like the dividing piece from the first floor to the second floor. And then why not? Let's begin with the barrels again. 
I mean, I guess we can build these up probably at least as many as like the first section. So let's go up at least seven. And then at this point, I think we start thinking about the roof. So I'm going to try to make a little trim here on the outside with some spruce. Let's do a trap door and then let's do a slab and then another trap door. Did not mean to fire off a rocket. That's for sure. Uh, let's just alternate between trap door and slab here. Let's go ahead and grab our deep slate then. Let's put a little bit of deep slate on each of these barrels. And then we're going to work our way up into the middle and i would also like to have like a strip of spruce wood also going up into the middle i think it'll look really cool all right i'm really not good at making roofs like this but let's see what this looks like from down here i actually quite like that i feel like that's not too tall it's definitely not too small either i do think it's missing one thing though or i guess four things hold on yeah i think i like this a little bit more i put four walls around like the third to top layer all the way up there and then put lanterns on the top i do think there's one other minor change i want to make with this build i think the second portion of it is a little bit too tall so we're gonna try to fix that here by bumping up the first portion by one block i gotta say if you're trying to build a tower uh definitely do it in creative mode first towers are at least for me one of the most awkward things to build it's really hard in my opinion to get the size correct you don't want a tower that's way too tall or too small or like a section of the tower that's like way too big it's difficult to get right that's for sure yeah i think this looks a little bit better now let's start throwing on the walls and then we can worry about the blades because those are going to be tough as well i think i said before we're going to start with the oak wood of course this will be all stripped down then we're going to transition into the oak planks here and then after the oak planks, we will transition into some birch. Then after the birch, of course, we're going to get some sand, some smooth sandstone, and some regular sandstone. I'm definitely digging the colors here. That's a good little gradient we got going on. The build's definitely looking a little bit funky to me right now, but I think it's because the walls are so just plain. So what I want to do to fix that is I want to decorate these walls a little bit more. We're going to throw in some spruce. We're going to have some trap doors, maybe some signs as well. Those could always look nice. Just sprinkled around the area and we're gonna give these walls a little bit more character and some more depth and i think we're just gonna do something like this all the way around gonna section off the different layers here and we're gonna throw in the very classic and iconic at least for me right now a uh, spruce archway with the stairs and the trapdoors. so let's copy this design all the way around the sides of the tower are pretty much complete we kind of just have to throw windows in the little gaps you know along the walls but now I want to work on the actual blades of the windmill and I want to see if I can get those right. This just looks like a massive like jungle gym here with all the scaffolding I have to place down for this. But I actually had to go reference one of my older worlds. I couldn't do this just completely freehand because I've built a windmill before. I'm going to... Wow, how did I not destroy a potato there? That was crazy. Um, but yeah, I actually had to reference one of my old worlds because I am lost. I don't know how to build this thing to make it look good. So I'm just going to kind of copy that design here. Now it might be a little bit difficult to see with all of the scaffolding everywhere, but I like what this design looks like. I do want to do something a little bit different though. I want to hang some white banners down. I think that could look really nice because the banners like flow in the wind and stuff. And I think it just adds a good effect to a windmill. And there we have the final product of the blade. But the final thing I want to do here is just throw in some windows. And I think I need glass for that. And I think now that all of the windows are on, this building is complete. And now that we have like the blueprint down, let's put another one probably over here. I kind of like this little hilltop. The second windmill has now been built. And it's a little awkward, honestly, because the banners don't render in when I'm like even just a little bit far away from these buildings like watch when i turn around it looks like there's no banners but they are definitely there and i really like both of these windmills i think it adds quite a bit to like the skyline i guess you could say it's pretty nice this path though needs a ton of work done to it so that is up next on the agenda and i think to begin i'm just going to put a whole bunch of coarse dirt everywhere the problem is we only have 42 so i do have to gather some more gravel do i have any left over a little bit of extra gravel but not much all right let me go fill a shulker box with gravel i got close enough to a shulker box here this like gravel biome that was here is kind of completely gone now i've been coming here for a while to get gravel and the only bits left really are like sloped down like that and i don't really feel like dealing with it so i'm just gonna say that's enough and i really hope it is we now have a full shulker of coarse dirt that should be plenty it'll be a rather large path but i don't expect it to be larger than an entire shulker box worth of materials so let's grab all this dirt and let's go start excavating a pathway so i'm just gonna start digging and we're gonna be replacing the blocks as we go
all of the coarse dirt is placed and now we have a much more defined pathway through this entire area now the pathway kind of just completely ends right over here and i really don't know where to lead this area to but maybe we can expand like in this direction eventually and this pathway can just continue you know kind of this way but for now it's just going to kind of go to the back of this house and i also wanted to mention that i don't really know when the city pathway is going to begin that's why I kind of just abruptly ended the course dirt right here. I'm imagining that the city pathway will either be out of like bricks or like stone or like deep slate or something like that. I think we can fade those in together pretty well. So just for now, it's just going to end right here. I'm going to go ahead though and grab a few different kinds of blocks so that we can texture the pathway a little bit better. I'm going to start with this small patch right here. And then we can kind of extrapolate the design I come up with all the way around. So let's mess around a little bit and see what we can come up with. I grabbed a bunch of random blocks. I don't know if I'm going to use all of these different types, but I feel like most of them could look pretty good in this kind of pathway we have going on. I know for sure I'm going to use some mud because I really like what mud and coarse dirt looks like together. The colors are super close to one another and they blend in beautifully, in my opinion at least. Grab some spruce logs. I don't know if I actually want to throw these around, but stripping the spruce looks decent too. I don't think I'm going to do it though. I feel like it's just too different of a color. Now I definitely want some stones everywhere, either bordering the path or just in the path itself. I think that could look pretty nice because if we have these stone bricks, I want to try to get this design going or then like next to a stone brick. You can have a muddy stone brick, which I think looks awesome together. So I'll try to be doing that all the way around. And this is also how we're going to get up to the different levels. We're going to be using stone brick slabs, some stone slabs. It'll be great. And I also wanted to throw a couple stones around, like some bigger stones like this. Not too many of them, though. I don't want to go overkill here. But just a couple in a few different spots, I think will be a nice touch. Just a combination here of andesite and smooth stone. I think we'll do just fine. This will also be a decent spot to throw some lanterns then, which also reminds me, I wanna have a very, very soft like fence border. So just every so often, I wanna throw a couple pieces of oak fence and we can throw some lanterns on top of those as well, but nothing too structured. I want it to be very open here. And this is kind of the main path design I had in mind. So let's just replicate this path design all the way around the area. And this is going to be super tedious. So I'm just going to cut away until I'm done. So I'm fairly certain the pathway is complete. We are definitely on the home stretch of this build. I want to now add in some like market stands across like the main section of the path. But for like the 1000th time in this video, let me clear out my inventory and my shulker boxes and stuff. And then let me grab some more materials. We have a bunch of stuff in here now. I have some spruce wood stuff. We have some granite stuff and a few different colors of wool. Let's see if I can just freestyle one of these. Um, I guess we'll throw one here. We're gonna start out like this on the bottom. We're gonna have granite and brick on the corners. And in the middle, we're gonna have some fence gates and we're also gonna have some fences. And now we kind of just have to build up from here. And I think we probably used fences to do this. Spruce fences, that is. And then let's maybe top it off with granite and brick walls. And I feel like we probably just do a really similar design. Maybe this time we just do fence gates all the way across instead of including the fence. We're definitely getting somewhere with this, but I do think I want to bring it down a block. Now let's figure out what we're going to throw on the roof. This is where the wool comes into play. I really want to just alternate the wool colors, but I don't know how to make it look good. Obviously this looks like garbage. Um, <laughs> I really don't know how to make this look okay. I do have an idea though. Hang on. Let me try something. I threw a trim around the outside with some trap doors and some spruce slabs. I really like what that looks like. Um, I might now have to change the blocks on the inside. I went ahead and grabbed some quartz slabs and then now we just need blocks for the middle. So I need another slab block. What if we use some dark prismarine? That could be kind of cool. I think this looks all right actually. That is a very simple little trading stand. Let's go ahead then and build about three more of these. I do want to use a different block on the top aside from the dark prismarine. So we're going to need three more like colorful slabs to pair with the, the white quartz slabs. I think we can find that. But I guess let me get the frames down for all of these. I looked at my storage room for a good while to try to figure out which other blocks I want to have for the roofs of these things. And I came up with deep slate tiles, crimson wood, and prismarine. Let's go ahead and throw these on and let's see how they look. Yeah, these are pretty much the exact vibe I wanted to capture when I was thinking about these little trading stands. I still want to add a couple more things to this village, but before I do that, my elytra are pretty much going to die soon. And also I have seven fireworks left. So I think it's about time we go to the mob farm and get some more gunpowder. 
Now after I restocked on my rocket supply, I went around and added a bunch of small details to this village. I added a couple carts, I think I uh, built three in total, just to kind of haul some hay and have some more spots for lanterns and make it look like this village is actually kind of lived in and useful. Then I kind of just threw hay all around the area too, and this recording looks kind of weird. I used like the first person perspective on replay mod and it kind of looks awkward. I don't really know how to describe it, it's just pretty weird. After that I decided to add some more detail to the trading posts by putting like a little interior kind of like storage area to each of them. We built up a couple custom trees, not too many, but I wanted to add a few around this village. And then finally, of course, it had to happen. I put leaves on the roofs of all of the houses just to give them a little bit more life. Now with those finer details done, let's take a look at the build in its entirety. When I began this episode, it was day 875, and the area between Shrammy Land and the eventual city build I'm gonna do looked like this. It was completely empty, nothing there at all, but then fast forward 100 Minecraft days to day 975, and it now looks like this. This is definitely one of my favorite village builds that I've done so far. I really like the house designs, and I think the colors blend really well together. And I also wanted to make the crop fields like the main focal point of this village, so I didn't want to put too many houses. And I think I accomplished that at least pretty well. Of course, though, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this build. I would love to hear your feedback. Now, since there's only 25 days left until I hit day 1000, I won't be able to have like a full length episode out. So I think what I'm going to do is just do a couple random things around the world maybe gather some materials, like do some interiors potentially of these buildings, just kind of prepare the world for the eventual world download at day 1000. So the next episode in this world will probably be the 1000 day movie, just to give you guys a little bit of a heads up. But thank you so much for watching this video. Really hope you guys enjoyed and I will talk to you soon. Bye.